ladies and gentlemen, boys and yay, girls. Welcome to episode 200 and fucking 21, 221 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I'm very long and I'm happy that you're here. Guys, uh, it's great to be here. Alpha Energy is on sale now. I was looking up what, what episode it is to try and correct myself, but let's be honest, I, I think that I can't remember and I don't think that you guys keep track anymore. So it's on the screen. Read it for yourself. Alpha Energy on sale now. LouSpears.com. The drop has gone crazy. It is available for a limited time only. It will not be available forever. Uh, and then it's not... I don't think I'm getting more of these after that. So grab it. There's uh, there's the cheaper one that's still good quality or there's the more fancy version, the Metal T, which I really, really like. It's got cool stitching. You can't... I think you can see it on camera. I don't know. Look, it's fucking sick, and would you just buy it and give me money now? Uh, Loosebeers.com. We also have uh, Afterpay uh, available if you want to get one on tick. You know, fucking pay for that shit later. woo Millennial spending. We love it. We have it here. Um, but thank you very much to everyone who's grabbed a shirt. I really do appreciate it. This uh, drop I'm really proud of. And to anyone who uh, complained... All right, I had a few people, and it's mo not most people. As always, when I'm here to yell, I'm here to yell at the extreme minority. And and by God, that's going to be most of the episode. Just to let you know right now, the the mo I've I just looked at my notes before I started, and most of it is like what six cunts have done. And I'm going to disregard the literally hundreds of thousands of positive actions that have been made towards me or what my do what I do in terms of views and comments and likes I'm going to ignore all of that and what I'm what I want to do is focus on what is quite literally absolutely definitely less than 10 cunts that I have seen okay but that's that's the unfortunate reality of my brain a hundred thousand People could go, hey, Lewis, we think you're a great guy. But if six of them are standing there and they're not smiling and clapping, guess what? That's what the next hour is going to be focused on. You. <laughs> to the people who complained about the other Alpha Energy t-shirt, the logo being too small, can I just say... I know without a doubt in my fucking mind, everything in your closet looks like shit. If you judge the the value or the stylishness of an item of clothing based on the size of the logo on it, you're a fucking moron and, and we don't need you. Oh, I was going to get the shirt, but it didn't say Nike in two meter long characters that took up so much of the shirt, it actually left the shirt and got printed on my forehead via a fucking tattoo. You're a moron, bro. You what? You you can't fucking wear a shirt that has a small uh, photo on it? A small logo? It has to be massive? You're the type of cunt that I can tell they're wearing a fucking uh, Adidas shirt from three streets away. And, and I know before I realize that it's an Adidas shirt that you're a fucking dickhead because whatever you're wearing looks shithouse, okay? It's called subtlety. Have you heard of it? Clearly not, if you, if you enjoy my shit. I'm not the most subtle cunt. I realize I am sitting here with blue hair and, and telling you how to dress. But that, if you really think about it, was not my fault. That was your fault. So really, the blue hair thing, delete your comments. That's your fault, okay? In fact, write a comment. Apologize, because I'm still unhappy about it. Although it's looking a little bit better with the regrowth, it kind of looks okay now. The blue has faded, and it's, and it's, it's kind of becoming green. I look like the Joker with anemia. Like I've been, uh, someone left me out in the cold and I've got hypothermia, but I still have like a, some kind of fucking criminal activity to do. I look like a Joker henchman, you know? I look like the guy that the Joker kills because I was impersonating him and doing it poorly, you know? And he wasn't, he just killed me to save his own reputation. That's the type of cunt I look like. But the point is, if if your reason for not liking something is because the brand name doesn't take up the whole t-shirt, you're a fucking idiot. And, and that's just facts. Now, I already know that all of you guys are going to send me photos of that one sweater I have 
that is just Lacoste written over it. And to those people, I say, good point. But I never said I was perfect. That's one that I thought looked kind of cool. The rest of my shit's small, all right? You got me. Well done. Who cares? Fuck you. Buy a shirt. Loosebeers.com. Anyway, guys. <sighs> I need to do stand-up comedy. I'm going nuts. I think it's coming back. Some gigs around the city are coming back. I did a little, a little practice run. I haven't been into the city. I did one on Saturday. I went into the city, walked around for ages, met a couple of you cunts. How do you do? That's actually the... I haven't seen some of you guys in person for months. Jeez, it's weird. I don't know what to do anymore, and neither do you guys. It's so fucking strange when you see me and when I see you. Neither of us know what to do. People want to come up to me and say hi, but then they're like, ah, COVID. And then and then I want to be nice. I, I don't want to go near you because I'm like, ah, COVID. But then I go, ah, I hope they don't think I'm a cunt. You know, like I want to, I, here's what I want. To anyone who sees me, this is the ideal thing. You say hi and we stay 1.5 meters apart and maybe we do the elbow thing. But I'm going to be honest, I don't like it because I'm so fucking long. By the time I get my elbow over to you, I gotta swing it out like this. By the time my elbow touches yours, I've already given three Asian women concussions. Cause that's cause that's my that's where my elbow is at. It's like Asian woman head height. So for me to, you know, elbow bump you, I'm taking out a, a, a few a few women. Right? But that's, but that's good. So I'm doing, I think uh, stand-up's kind of back a little bit. I don't really know what the rules are. Some rooms are back, some aren't. Some bars have gone under, which is fucking a shame. But the Comics Lounge is back. I think they're doing shows in the next couple of days. So Jeff, definitely check out the Comics Lounge. Um, that's awesome. I, I hope to be performing there at some point. And the Comedy Festival is open for registrations, and I am going to register. Don't ask me when, don't ask me where, don't ask me how many people can come. I don't know. But what we're planning for is very, very, very limited seating. So I don't know. But it, but but that shit probably won't be announced until next year <laughs> or it'll be announced and then cancelled swiftly just like last year or this year. Fuck. I have PTSD from that shit. I don't want to book anything in. I'm too scared of it happening again. <laughs> um. Now, uh, uh, speaking of uh, speaking of uh, uh, fucking uh, speaking of Melbourne comedy and uh, and uh, uh, an extreme minority of people, I've been uh, Facebook, dude. Having so many fucking apps to post on, like post comedy on, and try and trying to format your comedy a little bit differently for each fucking thing. I'm doing like YouTube. Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, Facebook, TikTok, uh, Snapchat. I should probably maybe be doing, but I don't know. That's mostly for nudes, I assume. There's like fucking literally eight things that I should be posting on every day. And I've kind of gotten to the point where I'm going to write one or two jokes a day and fuck it, they can all have it. You know, I don't, I don't have the brain power to write eight. If sometimes I get comments from cunts going, oh, I saw this on Facebook. It's like, all right, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my best joke for Facebook and then I'm going to go down the fucking list and I'm going to have to do eight different fucking jokes every single day for all of the different apps just for you. And then you're going to go, uh, this one sucks. No, no shit, bro. I had to do eight of them. I'm doing one. I'll change it a little bit. That's the best I can do. Okay, and also it's all free. By the way, I gotta be doing stand up as well, and this fucking podcast, and Luke and Lewis. So I'm fucking st and streaming. So I'm literally screaming for about twelve hours a week, and cunts have the audacity to go, ah, I didn't like this one. It's a free sample, you fucking cunt. What do you go to a Walmart and you walk up to the free samples lady? She gives you food that's like free, and you go, ah, this is fucking gross. Hey everyone, this shit sucks. No, you eat it and then you walk away. You walk around the corner and then you. You spit it in the bin. Be polite. I don't want to see your fucking negative feedback. Suck my dick. Speaking of that, Facebook is such a, uh, a, a toxic platform now. I don't know if you guys have been on Facebook recently. It is an absolute war zone. It's hell. It's hell on earth. It's the fucking World War I trenches where everyone has one shot and then they have to reload. And while they're reloading, the enemy shoots them in the fucking leg. And then they reload. And while they're reloading, you shoot them. But the shot went wide. You shot him in the shoulder. Everyone is just per like permanently wounding each other 
taking it in turns to fucking maim each other. It is hell on earth, Facebook. Uh, it's actually really interesting. Like, as a content creator, I've been experimenting with what works on Facebook because Facebook for a while was fucking dead. Like, in 2012, when I started, Facebook was TikTok in the sense that if you posted something good, it, it would make your career. I mean, that, Facebook's why I'm here, ultimately. Like, I started on Facebook and now I'm here. It's kind of fucking dead. But it is what got me here. You know, you make fun of Vine kids. I'm a Facebook kid, so I'm even worse, right? So uh, then Facebook changed uh, because they wanted money. And then they, and then everything on Facebook kind of died, and that's when I shifted over to YouTube, which is my favorite platform. I really, really like YouTube, despite all of its numerous flaws. I really do like it. So I, I've kind of pivoted over there while Facebook's dead, and Facebook was at a point where, you know, I got 120,000 or so followers on Facebook. For a while, no matter what I posted, even if it would bang on all of the other platforms, it would get like 10 likes, and I go, oh, they want, obviously they want you to pay for reach. And then I think they kind of worked out that shit wasn't really working because what that meant was you guys didn't see any of the posts from anyone that you followed, so you guys just fucking left. You were like, this platform sucks, I don't see my friends, I don't see the pages I follow, all I see are ads, I'm out, right? And th then that started the mass deactivating of all of the young kids. All of the millennials like started to leave Facebook and then the Gen Z Zoomers skipped it and went straight to TikTok and started cyberbullying each other and cancelling friendly Geordies. Like that's how it fucking went. Um, and now what I've noticed is Facebook has kind of come back, but in a weird way. Hang on, I've got to plug my fucking laptop in and I will not be pausing. Um, who do you think I am? Fucking, I don't know. I can't even think of a professional. Guy. Like who wants to listen to someone who actually knows what they're doing? Right, I'm unplugged. I'm fucking inserted. Uh, Facebook, what's happened with it, it's really interesting. My posts have started to go really well on Facebook. I started experimenting. I was like, okay, I need to, I have this huge audience. I should do something with it, especially because it's so good for fucking getting people to shows, right? So I just started experimenting. I posted a few videos. It seems like videos kind of only very, very rarely work. So I was like, okay, that's kind of out. I started posting some podcast clips that didn't really work. And then I started posting like screenshots of tweets and that started to work. I was like, okay, okay, cool. Photos seem to work. And then I thought, well, what about just writing jokes on Facebook? And I started testing them and they started going really well, probably because it's native to Facebook. I'm like, okay, well, that's good. That works. What I'll do is I'll take my best tweet of the day and I'll just put it on Facebook and then I'll screenshot it and I'll put that on Instagram. And I started noticing something from the same joke. So this isn't like a very, this is like the same joke on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And sometimes I would even just say it for TikTok, right? I'm, I'm not lazy. I'm efficient as fuck. Don't bag me. Be inspired. Okay. What you fucking, you work hard at your job, do you? Or are you coasting? All right. I save my good shit for the stage. All right. Everywhere else, I'll be honest with you. I'm coasting. If it's not YouTube uh, and the stage, it's it's or it's whatever was not good enough for those two things. That's what you're getting. It's fucking McDonald's. It's free. Fuck you. Right. That being said, sometimes I do put out a fucking banger. Like I put out um uh I something about my shirts and then some guy made fun of it who was a fan by the way and 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 keep in mind. He took the joke very well, messaged me, said it was funny and an honor, right? So I ripped this guy. Uh, he said, uh, I don't think, I said, assert your dominance, alpha energy, blah, blah, blah. And he wrote, I don't think it's possible for you to assert anything until your hair is back to normal. And then I said, big talk from a man with the most abnormal smile on planet Earth might want to sue Joaquin Phoenix, bro. He stole your look for the Joker. Pretty funny. I think that's a funny thing. He had a bit of a fucked smile. I'm sure that's not what he looks like in real life. I just chose the terrible photo of him and posted it next to the joke. A good back and forth. Bear in mind, he started it and he's a fan. One for me, one for him. We're all even, okay? Uh, and then I, I put that screenshot on Twitter, on Instagram, Facebook, and it went really well on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> it even made it to the front page of Reddit. So it's not my best, but it's definitely fucking funny, okay? Tens of thousands of people thought it was funny. It's definitely funny. But Facebook, even though the post likes and shares were real high, the comments were horrific, terrible. 
so angry, so mad. And I noticed that I think Facebook is showing my post to people that would hate it. Like that's the algorithm. Like you notice, like all I see on Facebook is people fighting in comment sections. And I think that the fucking algorithm shows posts to people that would hate it so much that they have to comment and fight. And I was like, that's fucking weird because I had never got this amount of negative feedback. I knew it was funny, but it was full of all of these names that I'd never seen before, all of these boomers, all of these people that uh, just would didn't seem to be the type of person to like anything that I do, full of the comment section, but the post had a lot of likes and shares. I'm like, that's strange. If it was a bad post, it would have no likes and the comments would be like, this is shit and it wouldn't travel. But this has both. So Facebook is like showing my post to people who would like it and then showing like 20% of the people who see the post, 20% of that audience is people who would fucking hate it. And then Facebook is just setting up bum fights. That's the fucking app. It shows 80% of the people something they would like and 20% people something they would fucking hate. And then it makes them fight and they spend all day ripping each other's throats out and looking at ads for fashion over. That's the fucking app. That's why the country's exploding right now. That's why the world's going to end because Facebook is just making each other fight. I mean... That's where I, that's my roots. Fighting on Facebook is how I started, but fucking hell, this shit's grim. I don't know about this. I don't think it's good. So I noticed that and I was like, oh, well, maybe, you know, I, I didn't think it was my best. So I was like, oh, well, maybe it was just like a, a weird post. So then I just started chucking up shit every day. I was like, you know, uh, I said, when I dye my hair blue, people were worried I would turn into a fragile dork who can't take a joke. Just check the comments of my last post. It looks like that happened to some of you guys. And then, you know, same thing. Heaps of likes, a few shares, a bunch of real positive comments, but crazy negative feedback too on only Facebook. None of the other places I posted it. And then... I was like, well, fuck it. If this is the algorithm, I might as well stir some shit up, right? So I put out this. It was International Men's Day. And I'll explain my shit. This is the one that got the most negative feedback, but also by far way more and the most positive feedback. So this was a good traveling post on Twitter, Insta, TikTok, everywhere that I posted it, overwhelmingly positive feedback. Put it on Facebook. It gets more likes and shares than all of the other platforms, but the comment section was fucked. I don't know what's going on on there. I don't know the type of people are there, but the algorithm is definitely showing you shit to make you mad. For sure. I started scrolling through Facebook. I started noticing it. Every post I saw made me mad and made me want to go, this is fucking shit house. And it was any anything from politics to entertainment to fashion. Everything I saw made me mad. It was like, it's like fucking opposite Instagram. I open Instagram and for the most part, it's not in chronological order, but everything I see, I follow or I'm interested in. So I'm like, oh yeah, a fucking toy, a fucking Oz rapper, some, a little bit of fashion, some shoes, uh, comedians. It's like everything that I like is there. On Facebook, it's the opposite. It's fucking weird because Facebook owns Instagram. Um, so I, what, what I saw was when I, this is the inspiration behind this post. I fucking, uh, I opened up Instagram on International Men's Day, right? Now, International Men's Day is to raise awareness about men's issues mental health, uh, some prostate cancer too, but it's mostly mental health because obviously men's suicide rates are so much higher than anybody else's. Um, so that is obviously a thing that we need to talk about and men just don't really talk. So we do need a fucking day, you know? we need. It's one of those days where it's like, yeah, if we didn't have a day, we would never talk about it, would we? You know, it's. I think it's a very, very important thing uh, and it's great. And I've, I've said this many, many times and I am a big, you know, believer in, hey, dudes, if you're struggling, talk to someone, reach out to fucking, uh, you know, charities that help with suicide stuff, especially ones that focus on men, women, if you're a woman, so on and so forth. I don't really need to say it. I've said it a million times before. But I open up Instagram and the first thing I see in the morning is like five different chicks on Instagram stories. These are like models, fucking SJW types, chicks that you follow for their posts, not their opinions, right? <laughs> that type of person. 
Uh, but unfortunately, you seem to get more opinion than titty. Whatever, okay? And and they're just trashing inter- men on International Men's Day uh, and just minimizing men's issues and all that kind of stuff. So, which, you know, I'm fine with if you're doing it in a funny way, but it was like serious, like, I hate my dad, therefore men suck ways, right? It's like, cool, okay, that's one dude, he was shit, that's not on us. And that doesn't mean fucking old mate who wants to kill himself shouldn't have a conversation with a close friend, okay? That's what the day's about. I'm not, you know, opposed to people making fun of anything, but this wasn't that. It was just, you know, attacking men and making fun of men for needing help, basically. I saw, like, five different chicks do that, and it pissed me off. So, I, you know, I expressed that frustration through humour, and I decided to call out that specific type of woman, the type of woman who sees men struggling and goes, oh, but they're fucking privileged, but they're bad, so their issues don't exist. That that type of cunt, right? And I wrote this. Scrolling through Instagram stories on International Men's Day really reveals how many women with front fringes are happy to see men struggle. Relax, we get one day to talk about men's mental health you still have the other 364 for your self-diagnosis. Now, that's funny, and I'm going to tell you why. That's funny because it's trashing the type of woman. Notice I didn't say women. I said the type of woman, you know, reveals how many women with front fridges are happy to see. That's what the fucking joke is about. I point out a specific type of woman doing a specific action. Not all bitches, but it had women in there, so apparently I fucking hate you, Okay. Whatever, okay? Very specific type of person. That's who the joke is about. And it's funny because it's true because every fucking International Men's Day you see chicks trashing men. And yes, it happens the other way, but I'm not talking about that, am I? So suck me from the back. Um, I'm so triggered. Uh, And the post goes nuts from mostly dudes because it's you know, hard enough for men to fucking talk to each other about our feelings. It's, it's make, it makes it infinitely more difficult when we are ridiculed for doing so, because that is why we do not do it. So the idea of uh, men being made fun of for deciding to ask for help on the day where you should ask for help uh, is even worse than just making fun of dudes who need help generally. Right. That's the joke is like, why would you do that? That is bad. Uh, And the comment section is full of cunts that are so fucking angry and mostly women thinking that I'm writing about all women. And it's like, dude, I love chicks. I love my mum. I got a girlfriend. I've had her for, for years. I've had her for years. It sounds like I keep her in a kennel. I do. And it's spacious and it's outside and she has her own water bowl. It's nice. I treat her properly, right? That's my mum, not my girlfriend. Girlfriend's an inside girlfriend. She's got a, you know, a, something in the lounge, like a little bed. It's soft. It's great. She loves it. Uh, and, you know, I walk her, it's, <laughs> this isn't helping my case. Is it? <laughs> um, so, what, look, I don't have to fucking justify myself because, let's be real, none of these cunts are listening to this. This is only on Facebook. So Facebook takes this joke, sends it to people who like the type of shit that I do, it goes nuts, and then Facebook goes, oh, we're on to a winner here. L- lots of people aggressively like this. What we need is about 20% of people to fucking hate it, and they are the loudest, of course. 1,500 likes. 109 shares, a very good post on Facebook. It's objectively good. And by the way, this didn't happen on Instagram, Twitter. It goes great on Twitter, TikTok, uh, Insta. There was like maybe one or two negative comments on all of the other fucking platforms combined. They went really well everywhere. But on Facebook, for some reason, the algorithm just shows your shit to people that would fucking hate it. It's crazy, right? So the comment section becomes a war zone. All of these women come in. Some woman was like, oh, my God, I can't believe that you would say that all women with mental illness are making it up. Read it slowly, you fucking moron. Here, I've got a diagnosis for you. Slow brain. You're an idiot. If you took that from my, if you inferred that from my post, me making fun of bitches who uh, ridicule men for needing help when they're suicidal, me making fun of that horrific type of person to mean that all women who have depression are just making it up and need to come like a fucking doctor in the 1930s going, oh, yeah, she's anxious. She just needs to fucking come try out this vibrator. That's, you're, you're insane. You are insane. And you know what? I, you know what? Now that I've said that, I guess you're not self-diagnosed. So you've actually, you've won the argument. Oh, clearly, 
<laughs> You're not self-diagnosed because I'm diagnosing you as with dumb contitis. And you know what? It seems contagious because the fucking comment section was full of these types of cunts. Dude, there was even some Melbourne comedians that I haven't seen for a fucking year because comedy's been cancelled and I assume they've been too busy working at a cafe instead of because they spent so many fucking years trashing comedians with an online fan base that when when the time came to actually make something online, they resigned themselves to working in cafes until the fucking outbreak was over. Some of those cunts were in the comment section and trashing me and in f- and and trying to say that I mean all women. It's like, bro, I never fucking said that. You're insane. And what's the funniest shit about that is some of these comedians talking shit in the comments section about the joke, right? I open up my DMs with them. They're asking me to open for my shows. It's like not only have you intentionally misread a joke and not being able to recognize it as something funny, you've also trashed me publicly and then sucked my dick privately. What's even sadder than that is that's the only funny thing these cunts have ever fucking done in their life is being an absolute fucking loser ripping on jokes. If I couldn't, it couldn't be me. A comedian trashing another comedian for jokes. Insta- like, if you really have an issue, message the cunt. Put it out publicly. I don't. couldn't be me. I don't understand it. This pandemic has sent some of these people insane where they haven't, they, uh, they haven't been around comedy for so long that they, ca- they fail to recognise a joke or they know it's a joke and what they would rather is interpret it maliciously and try to cancel me. They see fucking 10, 10 cunts named Karen who use a phone from fucking 300 metres away because they have weird glasses on and they tap it with two fingers and then wonder why the phone doesn't work. That's, they see 20 of those cunts trying to cancel me, so they go, oh, here's my moment. Let's kick Lewis while he's down. Meanwhile, I'm fucking killing it. Can't wait for shows to be back, bro. I, uh, it's, I don't know. Guys, I may have been ranting a bit too much. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's really interesting that that's the algorithm. Facebook shows you shit that you would hate. You've got to be mindful of that stuff. Like as, as, a, as a user, if you start seeing shit on your newsfeed that you fucking hate, you need to realize that the app is doing that to you. Like all of these people, I see all of these people in my comment section getting fucking angry at my joke and, it, and it's like they don't even realize they're being manipulated by a fucking, by artificial intelligence to ruin their own days because it's good for engagement, which is good for advertisers, which is good for Facebook. It's like, dude, you shouldn't be mad at me. You should be mad at Mark Zuckerberg. He's ruining your day by showing you shit that makes you angry. Don't yell at me. Go down and burn it. Go and burn down Facebook. It's fucking wild, bro. Especially because it, it seems so weird because um, like none of that shit happens on the, uh, on the other posts that I do. So like I'll put the same words, the same photo, the same shit on all of the other social media platforms and uh, only on Facebook do you see that stuff, which to me screams that that's like manipulated by the algorithm. The algorithm is like let's show – at least once or three times a day, this user, something that they will fucking despise so much that they have to, you know, get into an argument with hundreds of strangers that loved it. That's scary shit. That's, I mean, that's, that's, I think that is a big reason why America is the way it is and why they can't talk to each other because social media creates these fucking bubbles and then every now and then, will only show this bubble the worst representation of the other bubble so that, you know, the correct bubble goes, oh, look how fucking dumb these cunts are. They're so stupid. Meanwhile, if you show the other bubble, this little minority, little tiny group that gets shown to the enemy, they would go, whoa, that's not us. That's insane. I don't know. It's, It's very, very weird. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine spending my time arguing in another comedian's comment section about jokes when you yourself are a comedian. Although I guess a lot of the people doing that right now are not <laughs> comedians, are they? 
Fucking hell. Isn't it funny when, when you take away TV, all these TV opportunities and all of these fucking festival run shows that all these comedians uh, all of a sudden can't get any work because they got no fans. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Guys, I'm, I need to stop because uh, that's enough. Anyway, guys, they started it. I'll never say a name. And don't go on the post and argue with cunts because that's just bad for you and, and I don't, I've got no interest in it. Um, anyway, guys, the most important thing that I have to tell you here about, manscaped.com. Manscaped.com. If you want to, f- literally, if you want to shave your balls, bro, obviously, you know, I have sponsors from from uh, from people that shave nuts because no women listen to this because I'm such a sexist pig. I'm going back into it. Never mind, guys. Manscaped three, the lawnmower three point oh. I shave my nuts with this all the time. I shave my chest. I shave my snail trail. I tried shaving my armpits. It worked. I hated it. That nuts doesn't say anything. That, that like the shaver did a good job. I'm just saying that when I you know a few days after that I didn't like it. Ladies, I don't know how you do it. You saints. Okay, I'm sure it's a bit better if you've shave it regularly and you don't like trim it. This is more of a trim thing. This doesn't take it all the way. This doesn't get rid of 100% of it, which I kind of like because you don't want to, you know, fucking do that shit and then you end up looking like a newborn. It's no good, especially if you have a micro penis. God help anyone out there that listens to the show. Probably if you, if you, you know, if, if you're judging by, uh, by, by comments left on my Facebook page, you're all a bunch of micro penis incels. So that's your struggle, not mine. And I, and I, and I really do sympathize with you. Um, Manscaped three uh, lawnmower 3.0. This thing, if you want to shave your nuts, honestly, it's great. I don't know what to tell you. I use this shit all the time. It has never hurt. It has never done a bad job. Uh, the battery lasts for ages. I charged this thing fucking months ago and it hasn't died. And I probably turn it on much more than the average person because I find it very funny to go and like shave. I don't really want to. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I want to shave the mic. Yeah, that's probably not good for the mic or the shave. (laughs) Guys, uh, look, manscaped.com, use code SPEARS or use code Lose SPEARS. For some reason, they gave me two codes. They're sponsoring my YouTube channel, and for some reason, they want me to use a different code for my YouTube channel than I do for the podcast, but I've forgotten which one is which. So I'm just going to say use one of them, code SPEARS or code Lose SPEARS. I think Lose SPEARS is for YouTube, and let's be honest, the YouTube one pays more. So I, you know what? Use code Lose Spears, and, so, and then that'll be good. Whatever. Buy the fucking razor. If you need a razor to shave your nuts, it is good. It's way better than than the than the one that was twice as expensive that I fucking bought uh, from a razor store that it, that cut me, and I still have PTSD. When I use this thing now, I have memories of the other thing, and I keep like jumping, thinking that this thing is gonna do what the other thing did to me. I feel like a I feel like a, a I can't say that joke. I feel like a, like a like I have PTSD from something traumatic, and I need to learn to love again. I <laughs> that's not definitely not okay, guys. Please buy the razor because if I keep fucking talking, they're going to take it away from me unless the sales spike up. So if you want to support Spearhead Sundays and shave your nuts, this is the best way to do it. Use code SPEARS or lose SPEARS, manscaped.com. You get 20% off and free shipping. Uh, This is, I mean, I don't know how many times I'm going to say it. It's a good razor. If you want to shave your pussy and you don't want to get, you know, mince your flaps, this is how you do it. They got a whole, whole bunch of other stuff. They got ball wipes as well. I don't, know who, I don't know who the fuck needs that. I'll be I'll be honest. I don't know who needs to who has nuts that stinky that they need to wipe them. I don't know what you're doing with your nuts. I don't know if you've got a fucking portable sauna in your underwear, but if you do need that, I'm very very sorry that you need that. Okay? First first and foremost, I'm sorry that sounds terrible, but also Manscaped have the solution. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS or lose SPEARS, please, because I'm pretty sure not many other people do their ad reads like I do. So if I'm going to deviate from the norm and fill mine with all of this shit, we better prove that it works. <laughs> Manscaped.com, 20% off, free shipping, spears or loose spears. One of them will work. All right. What are we talking about here, guys? Oh, an update on my on my uh, night terrors and suffocating in my fucking sleep. Uh, I'm getting a, a sleep study done next week. Finally, uh, I yeah. From from last week, if you missed last week, I've uh, 
I can't breathe and I have really bad sleep apnea and that makes me wake up in the middle of the night because I start to, to die and then my body goes, hey, someone's trying to kill you and I wake up and I go, hey, who wants to fucking fight me? And then Jazz has to calm me down and it's a matter of time before she goes, calm down and I'm so tired I misinterpret her for an intruder and then I start fitting in a little bit too well with Frankston culture. Okay, so I need, for my girlfriend's face's sake, I need to sort this out. So I, the, I went to a nose and throat specialist my jaw's too small, air can't get in my throat, and my I have a deviated septum, nose can't go in my fucking... No, air can't go in my nose, so I, I think when I'm asleep, I must be breathing out of my ass. Uh, that must be the only way to fucking explain this. I'm inhaling through my ears and I exhale through my ass. That must be what's waking me up, the fucking smell. I smell more of my own horrific exhale farts, and I go, who wants to fight? And Jazz goes, calm down, what's that smell? And then I deck her. It's not good. It's bad. It's not, it's not efficient. It's not the best way to run things. <laughs> um, I'm in a mood today. There is nothing like I've have such, I have such a fucking unhealthy, um, a way of being motivated. Nothing motivates me more than cunts wanting me to fail. I don't know what it is. I like someone can say, I can talk to someone like more successful than me and they can give me the best advice and say, I've got faith in you and, and, and really rouse me up and give me the best speech of all time. And, and that is good and that will help me, but nothing lights a fire in my soul like some fucking dork saying, you can't do it. I bet you can't. You're bad. Nothing motivates me more than seeing that not responding to it, completely ignoring it, ghosting them forever, and then doing it. I don't know what it is, but I highly recommend it, guys. Much, and you know what? It is much better than going back and forth with those people and trying to stomp on their neck. What's so, you know what? Kill them with kindness and success. That shit makes people mad. <laughs> um, if there's any advice I can give to you, if anyone says you can't do something, don't even say that you can. Just do it. And you'll and when you see the it takes it, it takes eight months minimum. Sometimes it might take five years, but when you get there and you see the look on their face and you haven't been a cunt, when they go, fuck, they, no, they did it. I really didn't want them to do that, but now they have. Fuck, that makes me angry. But they have never once given me a reason to dislike them beyond being more successful than me. Now I have to do some self-reflection and realise that maybe my dislike for this person stems from jealousy and resentment and embarrassment in my own performance. Shit. There is nothing better than forcing a bit of self-reflection on some sad cunt. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the mood all 2021 is, hey, you better self-reflect because while you've been working in a fucking cafe during the pandemic, I've been doing the online thing like I told you to start in 2012. Not to disrespect anyone working in a cafe. You guys are soldiers I, and, and, I, use, and I, I require you every day. I'm talking about cunts that, not you, not regular hospitality workers. I'm talking about people that, uh, whatever. What am I saying? I can't breathe, right? So last update was uh, I, uh, yeah, couldn't sleep, kept waking up, would wake up at 4 a.m., whatever, wanting to fight a ghost that wasn't there because I couldn't breathe. So we organized a sleep study because the nose and throat guy was like, yeah, look, it looks like you have a recessed chin and your throat's too small. This might need jaw surgery, but we need to do a sleep study to confirm that's why you're struggling breathing because it could be anything else. Maybe it's just your nose. If it's not your airways in your throat, maybe we can just give you the nose job, fix up your nose, and then you're sweet. Um, then I go, he refers me, and then it... They put, they get back to me after three months of waiting for the referral. They refer me to an appointment, which will happen nine months from now. And that appointment is to determine whether or not I need a sleep study. So I thought, fuck it. There's no way I'm waiting over a year to find out if I will maybe do a sleep study. I'm just going to close my eyes and do it privately. Hence, 
loosebears.com get your elf energy merch that's just not cheap bro getting doctors to watch you for fucking 18 hours while you're asleep that shit's expensive it's not fucking not good right so anyway I, we've booked that in and that's happening this week uh and dude it sounds awesome private private health is fucking bougie as i've never had money and i i i would say i don't have money yet either but i've scrounged up enough ca- if you've ever done this in your life where you where you just really needed something done so you scrounge up enough fucking pennies that you found under the couch to go private it's a whole new world i don't know, like if i was rich I understand in America why they don't want to bring in public health care at all. It's fucking awesome. It's so good. Dude, I, he, I with the public one, I found out it was going to be a hospital bed and then they would attach like electrodes to my head like in all those fucking movies and then they would just watch me sleep. Dude, the private one, I go to a private hospital and then I check in. They do tests on me. They sign me in and then they drive me in... Their car, I get a chauffeur, and they take me down to a private lodge. Now, that's not my words. I would say room, cabin, hotel. They say lodge. It has a kitchen. It has three bedrooms. I'm going to, like, a five-star fucking hotel. It's got a break room. It's got bathrooms. It's got showers, a bath, a television. It's got Netflix. It's got fucking Ethernet. I'm going to want to fucking live there. And then they watch me sleep from cameras somewhere else, and I don't get disturbed. That sounds so fucking awesome. They... And then... In the morning, they give me a fucking gourmet breakfast. What the fuck is going on with my life? This is this is going to be the first nice thing of 2020. Dude, maybe I shouldn't fix it. Maybe I should just keep going back. You know what? The plus side of this thing is if I do get all of this fixed, you know, obviously I'm going to... I, I, I'll get to go through this amazing experience... Of the, of the sleep study where I get a chauffeur and a lodge and, and a butler and I think there's sex workers on call uh, and, and my own fucking catering and a, and a breakfast, a gourmet breakfast, and then they drive me home, by the way. Not only do I get all that, right? That's great. But after that, you know, obviously they got to break my jaw. I, need to, I might need to get braces. They got to fucking fix my nose i won't be able to breathe out of my nose for four months and then i won't be able to fucking eat solid food for months and my jaw will be fucked and i'll have to learn how to talk again and you know at at the end of all that it will all be worth it not for the amazing jawline that i will have which by the way it'll be over for you uh, say goodbye to your girlfriends not for how much more handsome i'll be not for the new nose not for the ability to breathe and sleep properly not for how uh, much more handsome and cool and amazing i will look not for those things what will really make this worth it is that i assume when i'm fully recovered I'll have to do a second sleep study to confirm that. And your boy gets another chauffeur, another fucking breakfast, another Ethernet 5G Lodge high class butler experience. It'll all be fucking worth it. <laughs> so, guys, I'm excited to let you uh, know how that goes. I think I think that's happening this week. Um, so I'll let you know how that goes, uh, but I am excited for it. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some funny fucking stories from it, depending on what's happening happening in my Facebook comment section between now and then, of course, because that was what about what about 40 minutes of the fucking show. I do apologize, um, but I had to rant somewhere because there's Lord knows I'm not going to be spending my time arguing with fucking open micers back and forth. <sighs> Guys, it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end of the podcast. It's brought to you by manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS. Actually, use code Lou Spears because that'll make the... <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> use whatever code you want, guys. Guys, you should only use code SPEARS because that is the podcast code and that's more... That's Honesty is important and it's a virtue. Um, 
If you need some life advice, send an email through to podcast at loosebeers.com. Summarize it in the email subject line and I'll do my best to advise you. Or if you have a funny story, something about vandalism or some criminal activity you've been up to, love to hear that shit. This one comes in from, I'll call this man Tom. Tom, break up advice, please. Hey, Lewis, I love all the shit you do, and I've been catching up on all of the old podcasts. Oh, cool, man. I, yeah, one of the um, Patreon supporters in, in the in the Discord server was actually talking about that. She, she I think at the start of quarantine, she started listening to from episode one, uh, and that's, I think is cool. If you really like someone, I mean, you could probably do this with any comedian. It doesn't have to be me, but I think that would be really cool because you could see me go from fucking, you know, I'm pretty sure that when I had my podcast, I still worked in a call center. So you can kind of see me go from like dead broke, struggling comedian to dead broke working comedian. (laughs) Um, So that's kind of cool. Oh, you can see little Louie achieve his dreams. Um, I've been listening to all the old podcasts. I'm 18 and my girlfriend and I broke up after eight months. It's been two weeks now and she has been really flirty and affectionate with one of my friends. Oh, and has been spending way more time with my friends than I have. She had pretty much no friends when we started dating, but about three months in, I made a huge effort to pull her into our group. Am I unjustified in feeling sad about this, or is everyone their own person and can do whatever they want? Any sort of advice would be really appreciated. Have a shit one. Okay. That's a really difficult one, because especially because you're young. It becomes less of an issue as you grow older because generally people have separate groups of friends and breakups happen and it's less of a big deal. But I assume you guys are in high school or uni and you must have a very small friend group with not a lot of opportunity to go outside that just yet. The good the good news is, mate, you're very young uh, and you will find other friends. The bad news is one of your mates is going to fuck your girl, ex-girlfriend, uh, and she's not your property, so you can't get mad at her. You can, however, get mad at the friend that does it. Uh, and now this, a lot of people debate this issue – I think that it's guy or girl, uh, if one of your friends, whether it's a a male friend or a girlfriend uh, and you're a male or a female, if one of your friends has a romantic partner for like almost a year uh, and you knew the person for many, many months and then they broke up and then you fuck that person who, you know, just even though they are broken up, still has massive emotional ties and baggage to the other person that will need to be slowly unpacked and unraveled over a period of maybe a year, depending on how serious the relationship was, maybe even longer. If you fuck that person, you are a piece of shit. Uh, And I think that anyone is completely justified in getting angry at whoever fucks their ex-partner. This is male, female. It is a dog act. And I don't know why anyone is disputing that fact. And it's not because women are property. It's because of the emotional connection you once shared with that person. Messing with that and how much tie, how much control and sway that connection has over the person is a low dog act and you're a shit cunt. And that's what it is. I don't know why that's disputed. It's like people assume it's like, you know what it comes from? It comes from like, Oh, women aren't property. So you don't own them. It's like, that's not what the argument is. It's not saying that if I break up with someone, they're not allowed to fuck anyone. It's that if they fuck one of my friends or one of my friends, fuck her, they both fuck each other. Both of those people are bad people because they have, uh, caused me a lot of emotional harm, obviously. And then if the argument is like, oh, it's not property, you just, if you're you're not together anymore, you need to get over it. Okay, cool. Once again, dismissing men's feelings, we go back to International Men's Day, which I just yelled about for 40 minutes. Stop trashing dudes for having feelings and then getting mad when they shoot themselves in the brain without talking to anyone. Um, so he, I don't know. This is, this is a really tough one. I would say it's, you know what, it's a really, it's, it is a really difficult issue because 
it's really on the friend and the girlfriend to not do this. You can't, I don't know if you can stop it. It just needs to not happen. And if it does, you need to take note of that and go, oh, this cunt's the type of person to, you know, if I left my wallet on the table, he'd take 20 bucks out. Can't trust him. That goes for girls as well. And yes, I literally mean that women are co- are, are, uh, are commodities. That's what I'm saying. That's literally uh, they're, they're literally a currency that should be exchanged for goods and services. Thank you very much, joke police. That's that's literally what I meant. It. You guys are fucking detectives with psychic powers. How did you pick that out of my brain? No, it's a joke. Um, it's a hard. I don't know. It's a hard one because if you. You can really come across as a jealous psycho if you go to your friend, you better not fuck my ex-girlfriend, or if you go to her, you better not fuck my mate. You can come across as controlling and psycho even though those feelings are legitimate. It's really up to your friend to not do it. So you could maybe talk to your mate and say, hey, man, uh, I've noticed that you and Sarah, since we broke up, have been getting really, really close. I just want you to know that if anything happens between you, I I, I would think that's pretty disrespectful. Uh, I wouldn't do that to one of your ex-partners. If you did that to me, that's not cool. But I would only really do that if it looked very, very likely that it was going to happen. I don't know. I don't know if that is good advice, actually. I'm not sure. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'd be interested to know your opinions on this one. I'm a little bit stuck. I do know that if they do fuck, both of them are bad people and you should get the fuck away from them because they don't care about your feelings uh, and potentially they were eyeing each other off anyway. I think that's also another big issue and a huge red flag is that if you break up with a partner that you've been with for a long time and who, who have known the friend for a long time and then they fuck each other, clearly there was a bit of that going on before the relationship. Um, that's never happened to me. I've never done that to anyone, but I've seen it happen to other people and I've been in friendship groups where it has happened and me, an outside viewer, was like, oh, yeah, I I saw that coming. Uh, That's another big red flag is that if they get together and they knew each other for a long time and straight after you break up, if it happens like a year after or eight months later, I think that is different and... It's basically like if you have processed it and you've gotten over this other person and then naturally, you know, a a long time after the breakup, they get with one of your mates that you knew. I think that is different. But if it happens in a really short time span, it was something was happening beforehand or at the very least they had their eyes on each other and they were waiting for the breakup. And in that case, that's disrespectful as well. Looking at your your friend's partner and going, fuck, I cannot wait until they have a big fight because I would love to sit on that cock. Disrespectful. Um, So that's what I think. Uh, I don't know if it's worth addressing. You can't, you cannot say don't do it. You probably could say, I want to let you know that if this does go ahead, I'm not okay with it and it wouldn't, it doesn't sit right with me and that would hurt my feelings. But maybe it's just worth seeing what happens and if it does happen, quietly exiting. You don't need to make a big deal out of it. You don't need to do have a huge fucking fight or whatever, but it might be worth stepping out if that does happen. Um, but I don't know. Read the comments. Some people might have some suggestions here. Maybe someone has experience with it. Maybe someone's done this to someone before uh, and they know the repercussions of it. Uh, so comment. And you can read them. That's, I'm actually kind of stumped on that. That is a very difficult question. But I do know that if it does happen, they are not good friends. Um, and and my, my last piece of advice is you're 18. There are so many more friends out there. Once you start getting in the real world, once you have money to engage in interests, go to uh, sporting things or playing in teams or nerdy shit and nerd events or playing video games you will match by engaging in interests and things that you like and things that you would like to learn you will find friends that's how school works you don't go to school to make friends you go to school to learn friends happen you don't go to fucking football to make friends you go to play football but friends happen you never there's very very rarely do you go to a place to make friends and leave with friends 
I tried to do that when I went to a, when I, when I had no mates when I was fucking sixteen, and I went to a youth group to church to make friends, not for God. Guess what? Didn't make friends, and I didn't form a very big bond with God either. It doesn't work. But when I started engaging in my interests, which is comedy, I got some of the best friends I could ever ask for. Um, and I wasn't coming to comedy for friends. I was coming to comedy for comedy. You see how it works? That's to anyone struggling with making friends. That's what really clicked it for me. It's like, oh, you don't actually go out and make friends. You go out and do stuff and coincidentally you make a friend. Uh, all right, we've got time for one more quickly. Uh, oh, we got one from Lewis Spears. Assert your dominance. Alpha Energy merch is now live. Thank you very much. I'll have to buy one of those. Um, becoming a dumb cunt. Uh, Evelyn. Hey, Lewis, I love your stuff. Hopefully I'll be able to see you live within the, within the next 500 years and American. Well, if your country's still around in two years, I'll, I, I, I will, uh, I really want to do America. I think it'll definitely happen. It will happen. I will, I'm manifesting that shit. I will make that happen. I will be the uh, big enough comic to tour America. It's going to happen. When I was younger, I had a bit of a shit personality and was also quite ugly. But over the last few years, I've developed a pretty okay personality. This is great, but now life has decided to bless me with fairly good looks as well. Here we go. We love puberty. As I have only been forming a good personality for a few years, I'm concerned that if I get hot, I'm going to become a boring, unfunny piece of shit with a huge ego. The ego part is obviously already too far gone, as you can tell by this email. How do I not become a flavorless white girl? Have an absolutely incredibly shit one. Yeah, okay. Uh, obviously, the ego is not big because you have called yourself dumb and ugly like five times, I would actually suggest uh, being a bit kinder to yourself, Evelyn. Um, look, I've said this many times. What you really want to be is an ugly duckling, right? Evelyn, sounds like you're a bit of an ugly duckling, and that's great for you because obviously you've had to develop a personality to survive because you're not a 10, right? I had to do this. This isn't just females. This is males too. This is everyone on the gender rainbow. If you're ugly, you need a personality to survive. Why do you think most... Uh, <laughs> why do you think most female comedians are quite fat? They had to be funny, you know? Have you ever met a 10 out of 10 that made the whole class laugh? You haven't. It's always the ugly chick, and that's great. It's always the ugly cunt. Very, very rarely do you meet, like, an incredibly beautiful person that's also hilarious. They're a little bit funny because they got charisma, but most of that is, let's be honest, because they're hot and you're going, <laughs> wow, he's cute, right? Ugly people have an advantage in the personality department. It most of the time doesn't overweigh the advantages you get from being a 10, but it does get you places, right? I, would, I wouldn't worry about it, Evelyn. I think just keep engaging with your interests. It sounds, look, honestly, to me, it sounds like you're going through puberty and you're growing up and you're becoming a woman uh, in the sense that your face is becoming your face. You're learning how to dress uh, and you're learning who you are. I don't think you need any work other than being a bit nicer to each other and don't stress about being boring. You know who is boring? Bored people. So if you stress about being boring and you constantly think about, oh, fuck, am I being boring? Do I have a shit personality? Guess what? You will have one. You need to engage in your interests, learn skills, uh, become confident in yourself and your ability to, to do whatever you're passionate about. You don't have to make money from it. You don't have to turn it into a career. You just have to be good at something. And everyone is good at something, whether it be video games, reading, or fucking women. Everyone has a thing. And no matter how weird or niche it is, it's out there. If you don't have it, go and find it. So that's my advice to you, Evelyn, is just experience more of the world. Go out, leave the house, live your life, make friends, talk to people, uh, and, and just try to listen... Uh, to what other people are saying and ask them questions and then respond with things that are related to that and you will learn social skills. That's all it takes. Learning social skills is really just asking other people about themselves. Cunts love talking about themselves. That's how I learned how to do it, right? I never knew how to talk to people and then I read a book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's by a salesman. Really, really great book. I read a few other books. Uh, Jordan Peterson's book is also really, really great. I would recommend that later on when you've learned the fucking basics of being a human. Just talk to people and ask them how they are and what they're into. And then they go, oh, I like biking. Go, oh, fuck, I've got this story about biking. Maybe you have one too. Back and forth, bang, you got a conversation. You'll learn that. You'll get a bit of confidence. And pretty soon you'll be selling 
merchandise that says Alpha Energy on it because that's how fucking alpha you are. Guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, thanks for emailing. Send an email to podcast at loosebeers.com if you need some life advice. Uh, if you would like access to uh, all of my videos and everything early, uh, support me on Patreon. I am going to say a massive apology to my Patreon supporters. I have not done uh, a bonus episode for many weeks. Uh, that is inexcusable, and I'm very, very sorry about that, uh, and that sucks. Uh, and I'm sorry, and I'm very sorry, uh, and I'm doing my best to make sure that doesn't happen again. To give you some perspective on what's happened in the last month, Luke and Lewis has moved back into the studio. That was a giant transition. Keelan went to Canberra, so my personal Lewis Spears stuff has been completely fucked, and I've only been managing to do one video a week, and the podcast has been a battle. Keelan comes back on Wednesday. So... I'm hoping that from that day, the content will slowly start to get back to normal. I'm very sorry that I haven't done any bonus episodes. That's totally on me and there's no excuse for it, but that is what's happening around me. I'm going to try my best to get another one out there. Uh, in fact, uh, what I am going to do is uh, right now I'm going to record another episode to be released on Monday for Patreon only, and it's going to be all about, unfortunately, Pokemon cards. Because I have been getting into Pokemon a lot uh, recently and I'm very, very sorry that yet another uh, guy you follow online has fallen uh, victim to the Pokemon curse and that is why I am quarantining it in the Patreon. Uh, until I'll do my best to quarantine it in the Patreon uh, and for, for as long as I can until it slowly starts to uh, infect the rest of my content and pretty soon I'll be starting up a Pokemon unboxing channel. So sorry, thank you. Uh, Patreon episode coming soon. The plus side is the Discord is popping and I have been getting videos out early on there. So that's my bad. I'll do my best. Thank you. Fuck you. Have a shit one. And I'll talk to you tomorrow on Patreon and next Sunday for all of you freeloading cunts who, let's be honest, are probably making the right decision at the moment because I haven't been fulfilling my rewards. So I'll try my best. Bye. (laughs) 